this has been much talked about and there are people who feel this idea is long overdue but talk to us a little bit about what exactly the innovation hub is yeah so it's actually the intellectual property hub mm -hmm. ip hub which is basically a resource uh, for those who are into the innovation activity to one learn about the various aspects of, of intellectual property mm -hmm. uh, the various types everything from uh, trademarks copyright uh, patents mm -hmm. utility models and things like those so basic understanding of what those are what are the laws in the countries and things like these and then there's a component of it um, around registration, so working with the authorities mm -hmm. around expediting the process, widening the, the scope of the process, because right now you realize that registration in Kenya kind of needs to physically happen in Nairobi. Right. We need to find ways of uh, creating, using infrastructure to allow everybody and everywhere, uh, particularly the, the devolved um, situation we're in, to, to be able to easily register their, their, their intellectual property. Mm -hmm. There's also a component there around enforcement of intellectual property rights once you once you've registered your intellectual property. And then there's an element there around generating revenue or monetizing the intellectual property. Um, that's what we call uh, monetization or licensing or things like royalties and things like that. And then right. ultimately, it's a place to attract investors um, who would be, who would have a view of those who are generating the in innovation and we'll be able to put their money in there from a venture capitalist point of view. Right. So in summary, that's what it is. You mentioned one of the key things you do is to expedite the process. And uh, obviously, that has been one of the biggest stumbling blocks for most of the people who want to protect their intellectual property. Paint to us a bit of a picture of exactly where we are, either as Kenya or East Africa, yeah. in regards to uh, intellectual property. Well, I can, I can put it to you in a context that I, that I understand. Uh, when, I, when I came into East Africa, uh, into Kenya uh, 18 years ago when I joined Microsoft, I knew we had a challenge with uh, the appreciation of intellectual property. I didn't realize it was as bad as I found it to be. And so very quickly, one of the things we focused on was finding a ways of resolving that. And one of the first steps was, one, assessing the laws um, in place, okay? So we worked with government uh, towards that, um, and uh, we successfully did that. Right. The second part of it is then you go about enforcing your intellectual property rights. So as a company, we did. Uh, we applied the first incident on something known as Anton Pillar uh, in this country that basically allowed us to enforce our right against somebody in this market that was, a, was infringing our intellectual property. Um, so that was a precedent-setting thing. And then uh, ultimately, we actually got an in court settlement, which was at that time the largest uh, in court settlement, and that probably, probably still is across Africa. The well, important thing about that is it set the precedence in the market that we do have laws in place. Uh, we have a court system that actually enforces that. Okay. Right. Now, unfortunately, what my observation subsequently was that it was fine with large corporates. Uh, we were able to do that. The problem is we are trying to encourage small and medium right. enterprises, young right. people, to do this. People are coming up with e new ideas. Exactly. This is right. rather expensive. So one of the deterrents has been the cost of, of, of this process. Right. The second thing is just, just, just general knowledge of, of, of where you go to. and Because uh, here it's kind of like a copyright is handled by Kikobo, mm -hmm. uh, patents um, and utility models and trademarks are handled by Kipi. So there's that complex thing, right? And we don't necessarily have the established uh, uh, legal environment from a, from, a, from a competency point of view, law right. firms that can help with this and right. so forth. So the first thing you hear from the young people as to why they do not um, actually register their intellectual properties because it's too expensive. The second thing is it's too complex. Right. So no one understands it. Exactly. Right. And then third is just too much of a hassle. If I'm an innovator, like I know one in Mombasa, it's too much of a hassle coming back and forth to do this. So these are the things we're trying to to resolve. Mm -hmm. yeah. From when the announcement came sometime in July to now, what has been the experience um, dealing with uh, innovators in East Africa? Well, first, um, it was great to see the reaction. Um, um, as you said, uh, it was long overdue, especially given the fact that we're directly addressing some of these challenges. Uh, for example, with regard to copyright, we have offered to pay for the copyright registration cost, right? So the front end, we are creating a, a platform which allows people to register their intention um, to register the copyright. That's in the front end. On the back end, we're working with authorities, like Ecobo in this particular case, mm -hmm. to work with their systems to make it seamlessly 
uh, seamlessly plugged into the front end I was referring to, so that they're able to register and it quickly and ex quickly does the registration and gives the certificates mm -hmm. that allow them to be in a position where should they need to enforce the intellectual property right, they have the formal uh, documents to, to proceed with that. Right. So that's what we have been working on and con we'll continue to work with that. Um, and, and also, obviously, from the awareness point of view, working with the various academic institutions, government institutions, private sector institutions, um, to gather the information that we put, uh, make available through the portal from an awareness point of view. And then we're also establishing partnerships with private sector players like Thomson Reuters, yeah. who has a competency uh, and a business around this. So one of the things we were doing yesterday is we jointly worked with the, uh, with, with, with the, with the ecosystem um, yesterday, uh, where we, we went through a half day or full day session around the things that we need to do. So um, that's what we've been doing and we'll continue to do. Ultimately, um, you say that it was kind of East Africa, but we're kind of piloting it in Kenya right now, but the intention is to scale it across Africa. Right.